Greetings all. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, you are about to learn the summary of a short story, The Gem and Your Dreams, written by Gloria Kebabazi Murhatani. So I'm sorry if the pronunciation is wrong. Apologies. So when it comes to the author, I couldn't grab adequate info about the author. I was able to obtain only a few, a little bit of info, and I'm not uh, pretty sure about its authenticity. And uh, the author is believed to be a lawyer and a women activist. And uh, when I get authentic info about the author, I shall upload a video, right? So getting into the presentation. So the short story begins with the introduction of Sam. Right, so he's the narrator, and he uh, he has a peculiar habit of noting down his dreams in a neatly decorated pad in careful handwriting, as it is very important for him. So his dreams are very much important for him. Even the pen that he uses to write is a unique one. You see, distinct from the other ordinary pens. So he's very selective about even the pen that he uses to write down the dreams. Sam believes that writing down his dreams with rare materials will make them happen in reality. So Sam tears the paper out of the notepad and keeps it under his pillow and trusts that God will help him in achieving his dreams. So he does this every time. Though he trusts God, he often wonders whether he'll be able to achieve his dreams. According to him, for every man, Finding the right woman to marry will be one of his dreams. Agreed. So for Sam, marrying Karen is the greatest of all his dreams. Yes. So here we could uh, comprehend the challenges that are in the midst of marrying Karen. So Karen will actually want to live with a successful man. According to Sam, a successful man is the one who can spend more money on his wife. So he keeps on wondering how he is going to make his dream come true. To convince her and to woo her, Sam has lied to her that he is rich, that his father is a minister, mother a doctor, and that his siblings are in the USA. Right? But in reality, poor Sam, he lives with his auntie, has no siblings at all, and doesn't even know who his parents are. So the aunt's house that he resides in is only a two-room self-contained house, right? So now we could see the other dreams of Sam as well. He wishes to build a mansion, right? He wishes to buy a 2000 model Nolan car. He really wanted to run a few businesses and doesn't want to work under anyone in all his lifetime. So all of his dreams require money to be obtained. So Sam is anxious and quite worried about finding this large amount of money before marrying Karen. Or else he says that Karen may run away with another man, right? So he is quite possessive about his lover. But now we could see that Sam is meeting his lover, Karen. So Sam wears his lucky t-shirt and goes to a cheap bar, right? The bar has a room that accommodates only 10 people at a time. It has only an old black and white Panasonic TV for entertainment's sake. Karen was there already sipping her Sprite. She gently massages him and Sam takes this opportunity to confess his dreams. So he shows her the paper that wrote the list of his dreams, of which the very first one was to find the woman of his dreams. He even shows her the date on which it was written, almost a year ago. So Karen, on seeing the paper, was very happy, right? So now we could see that the lovers talk sweet nothings and part their ways. Well, now let's get introduced to his friend Nico. The next day, after meeting her, uh, meeting his lover, Sam meets his friend Nico. Nico stays with his father in a five-storied apartment called 
yellow apartments. So Nico's apartment seems to be a mess with dirty utensils and foul smell. Sam talks to him and uh, uh, talks to him about his needs and of course uh, even about his dreams and how he's desperate of earning more money. On the other hand, Nico grabs him an opportunity of attending a Nigerian billionaire's party at his mansion. Sam is as excited as Nico as he had never seen a rich man's mansion. So also meeting all the rich people of the city excites them. And the very thought of dining with them makes both of them very happy and super excited. Sam even hears about the billionaire's daughter, who is said to be beautiful. But for Sam, she can never be more beautiful than Karen. See how much he loves Karen. So now they are off to the party. And uh, getting an opportunity to visit and dine in a billionaire's party and to feel important for the very first time in his life makes Sam quite nervous too. He understands that he does not have a proper outfit to, for presenting himself in the party. Nico promises him to get his father's suit and asks him to take a shower before wearing the suit. Sam gets ready and Nico orders him to clean his dirty room the next day, I mean, soon after the party, and Sam agrees. So what will happen if he doesn't agree? So he has no other way, isn't it? He has to obey him. So now Sam feels as if he's a pawn on his friend's chessboard because if he disagrees to clean the room, he would have to return back the suit. So he has no other way. They both arrive at the party and are received with a mean look by the security as they did not arrive in a, in a chauffeur, uh, shiny black car like the other billionaires. But still, VAP treatment is guaranteed. Sam and Nico are taken inside the luxurious mansion and both of them are airstruck by the different artifacts that indeed give the effect of an art gallery. Well, so here are some of the important artifacts that Sam admires. White statues of West African subjects, hangings on the walls, portrait of the billionaire's daughter in multicolored glass, Nigerian emblem made of shining metal, water fountain in the middle of the room, and paintings in the walls, right? So now Sam notices a group of people in one place and turns curious to know the reason. Sam gets in after they leave and is astonished to see a gem. He even remembers the gem being featured in a newspaper article, The Rich Men's Possessions. It is a flawless star ruby. The gem is red in color with a medium dark tone and about 15 carats. Having originated in Burma, it has a strong fluorescence when exposed to ultraviolet rays. The gem marks its presence for about five generations in the mansion and is worth around approximately $50,000, right? So now Sam decides to steal the gem as he thinks its value can make all of his dreams come true. Nico is actually busy talking to a beautiful lady, the rich man's daughter. Sam makes sure that the people are leaving the gallery and picks up the gem. Sam now places the gem inside the pockets of the trousers, which actually belong to Nico's father. He is indeed afraid that God will not hear his prayer, pr prayers, did not even think who will buy the gem, as a rare uh, gem was fe uh, features of the gem are already famous throughout the country through newspapers. And he had other fear too. He is afraid of juju. So in African customs, juju is actually an object that has been deliberately infused with magical power or magical power itself. So he thinks that maybe the gem contained uh, some harmful magical powers. So he was afraid of that. But uh, Sam has altogether uh, done a risky deed and feels quite burdened. Losing interest in the party, he informs Nico that he is leaving. Nico is confused but he's drawn towards the aura of the billionaire's daughter. Sam promises to return his father's coat tomorrow 
and also to clean his room and he leaves the place. Well, Sam somehow manages to cross the three, three exits. It's not three, it's a three typographical error, I'm sorry. So Sam manages to cross the three exits and gestures at the watchman uh, with a smile. All of a sudden, two heavy bodied bouncers catch hold of him and uh, they ruin Nico's uh, uh, father's coat that he was wearing. He's asked, I mean, Sam is asked, as with whom he has come. And Sam, very simply, he points out that Nico. Nico, on the other hand, says that he doesn't even know Sam. So Sam is uh, all alone now and he is pushed out and thrown into a cabin vehicle like garbage. Sam is worried about the gym, his grief, and even about Karen. Sam experiences the physical pain and uh, especially his pain about uh, the ruined uh, coat of uh, Nico's father. And he even imagines uh, Karen in another man's embrace, which he just couldn't tolerate. He understands that he is being led into the Luzuira maximum prison and feels chilled and nervous. Sam gets depressed as he's locked in. He takes his coat and keeps it aside. Very casually, he puts his hands into the trousers and he understands that the gem is still inside his pocket. He gets excited and fearful as well. Well, so though Sam gets the gem, he feels sad that he is locked inside. But on catching hold of the bars, he could sense that the cell is not locked and he gets super excited. The door being open completely, Sam enjoys his freedom and feels optimistic as he rejoices that his dreams are not ruined yet. It is yet to happen. He is indeed quite happy about his immediate future and is very much optimistic and hopes for everything better. Right? So with this, the story ends. And thank you for uh, watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, do subscribe like the video and uh, do share your thoughts in the comment section and this is Wahida signing off.